Hey, what's up everybody? Rob Marzullo here, Ram Studio Comics. Welcome back. So forgive the poor audio. I'm basically just taking my phone on this one and just, uh, I've got it mounted over my drawing tablet. Uh, and I wanted to test this in 4K, so I was excited to figure out that my, my phone could do 4K, but then I realized that my recording setup couldn't export to 4K. So I've got to figure out some workarounds or try, uh, try something else there. So I wanted to just try this out, so a bit of a, a test run here with the uh, setup. And uh, yeah, I want to see what 4K look like anyways, so. so I figured I would do an eye. Why not? They're easy, they're fun, you should practice them often. So, an eye it is. And of course my air conditioner had to kick on right as I start this video every single time well except in the winter okay so just drawing out the perimeter shape of the eye somebody asked me in the last video too or a few videos back how I come up with the shape uh, just keep in mind that I do think about the sphere of the eye and then I just draw a slope down here to connect to the tear duct a point up to the back and I always make sure to round this up to connect to this point the other thing to think about too is uh let's see if I can move this looks like it's a little too high up on the screen there okay um the other thing that I think about is in a more realistic depiction that this actually bends up more or you know whatever you want in your style but you really want to play around with maneuvering these shapes in a variety of ways just to even get to this point but again you really want to think about the spherical shape of the eyeball back behind all that information so then you start to think a little more dimensionally about the eyelid and the way the skin kind of comes off that I guess and things but yeah and then past that if you're going for a more realistic look you're gonna usually draw the ridge of the eye I notice in a lot of comic styles uh, not all of them but some they'll get rid of that ridge so if you could see let me erase that back so in a more realistic depiction, you're going to make sure that this is more evident because it, it gives you that extra layer of depth. Like if you were to look at this dimensionally, it should go, you know, like down, out, back, around, out, back, you know, something like that. So let's go ahead and draw the rest of this in. Okay, so the other thing I tend to do is when I place the iris, uh, I usually make it at least one third the distance across. Well, usually bigger. I usually put a bigger iris in there. And you can draw this uh, right through. It's a good habit to get into to check your work. So draw right through that eyelid. And the pupil, you could do a cross like this. And it actually be pointed up a little bit. That can help you find the position of the pupil. Something like that. Fill that baby in like that. Okay. And then a drop shadow across here. This is usually the shadow from the brow, or I guess that in the top eyelid, but mainly the brow. I don't know if the eyelid would cast that much of a shadow. Maybe if you got really, really thick eyelids. No sleep. Okay, so now let's erase some of this back. And a little highlight right here next to the shadow side. And another little highlight over here. I kind of go highlight crazy in the eyes. I like them to look pretty wet, you know, it makes it liven some up. A little shading, but I won't get there yet. Let me, let me get the rest of this in place. So as I get more of this information in, I tend to start shading down. I also use a uh, sheet of paper for my hand because I'm, I'm a Chris Mungin, Chris Mungin? I can't say that word trying to combine two words but basically I smudge a lot let's just leave it at that okay so the eyelashes I tend to do this uh, 
overly animated look where I put them all together and do these big kind of chunks of eyelashes, but I like it. It really traces the eye out really well, makes it look pretty cool. And you can be uh, as creative as you want with this, really. I'll start with this. You know, keep in mind, too, just until you're really sure of an idea, just, you know, draw lightly. Just sketch it in. That way you're more open to change. If you, you know, commit too early on, then you'll, uh, you'll kind of settle on a bad idea sometimes. So don't draw it in too heavily until you're, you're ready to commit. Commitment can be a scary thing. Okay, so I'm going to do away with this bottom ridge because in my style I typically like to trace the eye out more and cover up my work there. So I'm going to fill this all in like this, but then what I'll tend to do is right about here I'll separate it so I get a little bit of that effect. I'll do some line breaks right there. So that's just the style choice that I make with this particular uh, end of it. And then I'll bring these uh, eyelashes back and down. And again, with the larger shapes that I like to do. So I'll fill that in. Now obviously this eye is looking up a bit because you've got some distance, uh, some white of the eye below the iris. So you got to really be aware of the uh, the white of the eye and the negative space around the eye. I think those are the most important parts to study to get it right. The rest of this is kind of style uh, stylized, but it's amazing how uh, inaccurate you can make an eye look if those areas are uh, a bit off. In fact, I think I got a little too much distance from the pupil to the bottom of the iris. I'm just going to kind of nudge these lines around, but I'm going to do a soft erase and clean this up. This is still pretty, pretty rough. So, you know, the nice thing about filling them in like this too is I can adjust these lines pretty easily. I can bump these lines up. You know, it's going to make the eyelashes appear thicker, but I kind of like that anyway, so it's not a big deal. And as far as placing the eyebrow, I typically just come off the eye like this on an angle. Start there. Bring this up and down. I'm probably going right off the page at this point. Let me slide this back. So used to working digitally, I gotta get used to this uh, traditional setups. Throwing me off. But yeah, so there's you know just thicker basically, and then as it comes to that plane change of the the forehead, the brow, uh, just create a smaller point. And then obviously you can get in here and stylize and put all these like little crazy strands of hair. I typ typically will do that when I ink it. Go a little bit wild with that. And then I'll get over here and do some little shading. So now let's go ahead and soft erase this back real quick. And then I'll uh, finalize this puppy. Oop. Try to flatten out my soft erase. My kneaded eraser. So it feels good to be getting back to traditional. I've been away for so long, um, kind of having a hard time not not doing this now. It's funny, it's addictive. But traditional is uh, is a good time. I got to get my other pencils out though. I'm kind of uh, not digging the technical pencil anymore. I switched over to the uh, I don't know what they're called. They're, they're more like artist pencils. I'll show them in the next video. But they're just you got to manually sharpen them as the only drawback. But they have a you can get a nicer point and variation of the line with them, I think. And I, I have it set up where I have two uh, lead types, which is nice. And I would say, uh, let me time lapse this next part, but I can't because. My intention is actually to record this and upload it as is. So it's going to be kind of scary, but um, yeah, since I can't truly um, 
export 4K video out of Camtasia 2, and I've got to upgrade to Camtasia 3 to do that, which means spend more money, always. Um, and then also the fact that I don't know if I want to do that, not just the financial reason. The uh, I'm, I'm always scared to update to the new program of anything, and uh, definitely with video because I'm I make a majority, well, pretty much all my living now on video. So it's uh, it's scary to update things when they're working just fine, but I'm kind of a little frustrated that I can't do true 4K video when I have the ability to record 4K. So this is my little workaround for now until I make my decision. And uh, hey, if you guys, anybody out there has got experience with the new version, let me know what you think, because uh, yeah, I always try to keep my ear to the ground when it comes to stuff like that because the moment you don't, you just blindly upgrade something. Uh, I've had plenty of my share of problems doing that. So I like to really know what's going on before I hand out the old credit card. Alright, so there's... I even want to make these a touch larger now. And then I'll usually, at this point, I'll start to add in these little fine points and couple more eyelashes here and there because obviously this isn't anywhere near the amount of eyelashes that you'd get in realism or something like that so just start to kind of pick at it and add a few little more protruding out so this can just be fun you know to kind of try to come up with different styles of it see what you can do and I always I always think that things like this really help to showcase your style and people can like recognize your work just by the way that you do you know eyes or hair or any number of things but it's always fun to uh, develop your style and this type of stuff and get to this part and you know really change up the way you might do the glare try to change the shape a bit or you know, any number of things And I really want to bend the shadow as it hits the iris because it will help to uh, make the iris appear more round. Rounded. Likewise, you can put little glares on the, the front of the eye. You can really do this with the color though. That's usually what I do is when I go back and color it, I'll make sure to put little bits of white on the highest point of the eye right there and that usually rounds it out pretty well almost there got to remember to really move that paper under my hand or I start smudging pretty bad And we can do a little bit of shading from here. So I'll usually taper these lines pretty heavily. And I'd probably do a little bit more stylized version of this with the lines, but uh, since I can't move my page, this is, uh, this is what I'm going to go with. So I typically rotate my page a lot when I draw. You know, because us funny left-handers, we hold the pencil funny, you know? I always got that growing up. Why are you holding your pencil like that? I don't have a choice. I'm left-handed. Okay, so, you know, and you can go as crazy or as simplified as you want with all the shading, but essentially, you just want the appearance that it's dark around the top and there's a bit of light source on the bottom you know so on and so forth I won't get too far off into that you can really get lost in the details all right and then for the the eyebrow typically we'll just kind of scribble this in and whatever happens happens there's really no technique it's just blind luck sometimes I'll just close my eyes and scribble 
throw caution to the wind. Don't tell me you've never done it. Yeah, so hopefully this video is uh, showing you a thing or two. I'm not gonna. I'm gonna stop it here because, quite honestly, this video file is probably getting huge. That's the only other drawback to 4K that I can really think of. Um, other than you guys will see all the flaws in my work because it'll be in high def. more little lines I'll call it good um, so yeah so I do a little bit of shading off to the sides again just trying to round it out a little bit more on the edges okay that's it I'm done okay so let me know what you guys think uh, as always I appreciate watching the t uh, channel Duh, can't get it out and uh, more on the way real soon so I'd love to know your feedback and keep drawing keep having fun and bye for now